Hi everyone, this is Ruby from The Useful Journal. I'm bringing you my review of the Archer and Olive journals. From what I understand, until Archer and Olive came along with their 160 GSM journal, the market was dominated by journals like Leukstrom and Moleskine. I wanted to see what it was like to work with heavier paper. They had a lot of positive reviews on social media, so I thought it was worth giving them a try. The Archer and Olive journal has so many choices of sizes, pages and covers. They come in B5, A5, B6, square and travellers sizes. They also come in 112 pages, 144, 160 and 192 pages. They also come in standard white paper. Uh, they come in black, craft and they've even got rainbow coloured and you can get a Neapolitan which is black, white and craft mixed. This 160 page journal was 520 grams. It comes in a beautiful box. And then you open it up and then there's your journal with a lovely scalloped edge belly band. Now I got this one as part of a mystery box. The mystery box had this journal and it also had uh, a black leatherette journal with a gilded edge that's white pages and the mystery box finally the third journal was a blackout journal. I'll just quickly show you the paper. So that is the blackout journal uh, and that was my third one. So I was really happy with the deal I got. So Archer and Olive journals sit at the pricier end of the spectrum for dot grid journals. Say you got this one with a linen cover, 160 pages. It works out at about 20 cents per page in 2021 prices which it really is at the upper end. But the good thing about Archer and Olive is that if you really love their journals and you want to get more than one, they do have the mystery boxes and the subscription boxes, which reduce the price. This is called the Midnight uh, Moth. Uh, it's a purple color with a foil stamped moth on it. It's linen. Now with the linen, I like that it's a natural product, but it marks easily. Like you can see, I've been using this one for five months now. It just gets dirty. Like I try to be careful. You'll also notice there's a couple of pulls in the linen on the back. You can wipe it with a cloth, funnily enough, and try and clean it off. They do have a lot of leatherette options if that's really a problem for you. The other thing was that um, I loved the stamp of the moth, but it has come off a little bit. Uh, it's worn away with use. I've only got a month left so fortunately by the time I finish the journal it will still pretty much be there but uh, I imagine that if you used if it took you 12 months to fill the journal that might look a lot more worse for wear. There is a pen loop. It is glued into the back cover in front of the pocket which is a standard concertina pocket. It's got a, a elastic enclosure and it's got two ribbons. I like that there's a point of difference in terms of the ribbon having a little charm on the end. And I actually, I wasn't sure if I'd like that, but I actually do because it makes it easier to grab when you're trying to find your spot. So nice little touch there. There are 27 by 39 dots. The paper's not quite as smooth as some others. It has more tooth in it, um, which I'll talk about later because it's important when it comes to how the pens work. It lies flat. There are no page numbers. On most pages, the dots line up. However, there can be up to one millimetre of variation. Uh, on either side and I've noticed on a couple of pages sometimes it's very slightly off, ki off kilter on the side of the page but it's really unusual for it to do that. When it comes to the paper 
like if I pay this much for a journal I want to be able to work in it directly and I've noticed a lot of people doing heavy watercolour have to paint on separate paper and then stick it in and you'll see I've done that here so that's a watercolour and another one here that won't bother most people and I will note that Archer and Olive do have a watercolour journal. So this watercolour was done straight on the page and it's fine. But there are a few things that I've noticed, including when you do a lot of wet on wet watercolour on this paper, it makes the paper pill a bit and the colour doesn't sit as evenly. Uh, you can't really see it more than you can feel it. So here the paper's actually become quite rough and mm it's ruined the surface it doesn't come through to the next page but it has ruined the surface and uh, that's what can happen it pills up and and you've got to be quite careful not to add too much water um, it's also hard to get much depth in your watercolor because the water soaks in too fast see how there's a couple of darker patches that's where the paint has soaked too much into the page and left a mark um, it hasn't bled through, um, but it's just, it's, it's okay for watercolour, but you've got to be light with your touch and not put on too much water. There's no ghosting or bleeding um, from any of the usual pens. I test with both a a very fine sharpie and a fine sharpie. Um, I only bother with the, the, the heavier sharpie on the paper that's really good just to see uh, how it copes. Like the normal sharpie you can barely see through, the very fine sharpie sorry, and the, the other sharpie comes through a little bit which is normal for paper. Like there's hardly any journals where uh, an alcohol pen won't come through. Something that was interesting to note was when I use an ink stamp and you can see that the ink has started ghosting through afterwards. You can see it several times on that page. I'll bring that up closer so you can see um, they're coming through from the next page. That's only happened over time that the ink has soaked, kind of soaked through the paper. So in my pen test there was no smearing before or after highlighter use, noting that I wait 10 seconds to highlight after using my Micron pen. I got smearing on the Micron up to 12 seconds. Uh, after that, it was okay. So it just means you've got to wait a little bit before you rub out your pencil. The pages are a cooler white, but I think that the whiteout options, regardless of what they were, don't stand out too much. So it's good with an eraser because of the tooth in the paper. There's no feathering. Uh, and just quickly, I'm going to rub out the Pilot Friction Pen and see if that comes off okay. And yes, it did. Okay, this test was for the dot darkness and you can see that the N60 pen, you can still see the dots through it, but the next pen up you couldn't. That's pretty average for journals. The dots are, dark enough that you can see them to work with but they really don't bother me much once I've done my my drawings. So I've been using this journal for five months as my bullet journal. It's a lovely journal to use. The cover is marked. Um, it has a thread pull and the, and the spine has cracked a little bit but it's all holding together. My spreads look good. It's funny how you get used to the thicker paper. I thought I wouldn't like the fact that I couldn't riffle through it as easily as I could with my lighter weight journal, but you do get used to it. It's such a satisfying journal to draw in because everything looks so good against the white paper. Uh, it doesn't worry me so much now. I want to give Bonnie, the owner, a shout out for talking about mental health issues. And when you subscribe to her newsletter, you do get uh, handouts and things from her that will help you with mental health. We need to normalise mental health and talk about it more. So I really appreciate that she's making that effort. I love this journal. 
Um, I've really enjoyed working in it. I've got a few more to work through. <laughs> so um, I'm sure Archer and Olive journals will be showing up in my feed again in the future. So thank you very much.